Notice how the gas in the system is cooling down as I reduce the temperature. As the gas cools, it moves slower. That is, its kinetic energy, its energy of motion, decreases. Slower and slower until it stops. Now what temperature is it when all motion stops? Minus 273 degrees centigrade, which we're going to call zero Kelvin. OK? <laughs> so why would you bother using Kelvin? Well, in the case of gases, the ideal gas equation, PV equals nRT, if you were to use, for example, minus 1 but degree C, you've got a problem because you're going to need to find at least one other negative value. Now what about pressure? Well, pressure is to do with how hard and how frequently gas particles hit the side of a wall. Uh, that's always going to be a positive number. Volume? Again, what does a negative volume even mean? Like some sort of black hole? I have no idea. N is a number of moles. That has to be a positive number. R is 8.31. Well, you're not going to be changing that. So, how we fix the problem? Well, we use Kelvin because there's no achievable zero. You can't actually reach zero Kelvin. So you're not going to have any zeros or infinities. And also, you're not going to have any negative numbers either. So no problems there. The conversion, those are the two equations. So if you're going to convert 127 Kelvin to degree C, what you need to do is just take 273 away, leaving minus 146 degrees C. Going the other way, eh, just add 273, which gives you 400. The IB always has the 27s, because it makes nice round numbers. Typical question, what temperature will double the kinetic energy of a gas at 27 degrees centigrade? Ah, 27 should tip you off that you need Kelvin. So since the kinetic energy is proportional to the temperature, as we saw in the graph, temperature and Kelvin, of course, it's not going to be 27 degrees. Using our conversion, let's turn the degree centigrade into Kelvin. This gives me 300 Kelvin. Now I'm going to double the kinetic energy, which means double the temperature. to get me 600 Kelvin. Is that D? No, no, no. The units are wrong there. So now I've got to go back and take off 273 to get my final answer. Leaving me with 327 degrees Celsius. Clever, eh? And we're done.